will meet the best of the best. Uh, we're also honoured to present the Enterprising Graduate of the Year Award as part of this evening's proceedings. My name is James Stafford. I'm an Executive Manager of International Business Development here at the Institute, and I'm delighted uh, to be your host this evening. Uh, on behalf of Box Hill Institute Group, thank you for joining us for this special event. Now, some late breaking news we have here. The Macquarie Dictionary uh, has announced uh, a new word, phantom vibration syndrome. Now, that's, uh, it sounds like three words to me, but it's all PVS as word of the year for 2012. Uh, so the overall winning word uh, was, it was selected by the Vice Chancellor of the University of Sydney. Uh, we've all experienced that, haven't we, where you feel that there's a vibration in your pocket and suddenly you feel down there and there's no phone there at all. Yes. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's a noun to describe the constant anxiety in relation to one's mobile phone. And it's apparently an obsession. So if you're... Anyway, the point of the story, of course, is please turn your phones to silence. Uh, so I would like to ask Elizabeth White, Box Hill Institute Board Chair, uh, to officially welcome you. Thank you, James. Um, I'm proud to tell you mine is quietly put away in my bag, so hopefully it doesn't vibrate or do anything else. Um, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Box Hill Institute Group's 2013 Student of the Year Awards. I'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people, who are the traditional custodians of the land we're meeting on today, and I'd also like to pay respect to the Elders past and present of the Wurundjeri Nation and extend that respect to other Indigenous Australians who are present. I've got great pleasure in welcoming um, several special guests tonight, uh, and that particularly includes Anna Laird, who's representing the State Member for Forest Hill, Neil Angus, who's a great supporter of this institute. Welcome, Anna, and please uh, send our thanks back to Neil for um, letting you come along tonight to represent him. I believe Parliament's sitting tonight, and Anna did tell me that she thought we'd be much better fed here. Uh, I'd also like to welcome my fellow Institute Board members, Glenn Walker. Glenn, you're there. Put your hand up. Ian Hind and uh, Michael Zangmeister. Thank you very much for those um, attendances for those three board members. Now you'll probably notice tonight in my welcome, and if you've peered very hard at any of the name tags of the staff of Box Hill, that they're referring to the Box Hill Institute Group rather than Box Hill TAFE or Box Hill Institute. It's Box Hill Institute Group. And that recognises the extraordinary growth of the Institute to the point where we now have operations across secondary schools, across vocational education and training, and higher education, which is the university sector, along, of course, with our Council of Adult Education operations. And we operate as well as Box Hill Institute Singapore, Box Hill College Kuwait, and the Australian Pacific Technical College component. So it's much easier to put Box Hill Group on our name tags, isn't it? But it does, uh, I think, sharpen our mind mightily that everybody within that group of operations is eligible to participate in these awards and have done that. So we welcome all of the um, potential award winners here tonight. We're also proud to be presenting the 2013 Enterprising Graduate of the Year tonight which is a prestigious award given to an alumnus, a past student of the Institute, who's gone on to demonstrate leadership, enterprise or excellence in their field of employment or in community service. And we're very proud of our alumni here. We welcome also John Maddock, the Chief Executive Officer of Box Hill Institute and his wife Jill. We welcome the Box Hill Institute Group Executive Team, represented tonight by Daryl Kane, Greg Pringle, Jude Hollings and Sandra Walls. And we especially welcome the 2012 winner of the Vocational Student of the Year, Julian Murphy. Julian, can you stand up and just let us see where you are? Welcome, good to have you back and thank you for joining us again. <laughs> we'll be hearing later from our guest speaker for the evening, former student and AFL Victoria's Multicultural Programs Coordinator, Kashif Boons. Kashif, you're, thank you very much. We look forward to hearing from you. And of course, all the award winners, guests, Box Hill staff, ladies 
and gentlemen. So that's everybody really, isn't it? These awards tonight rate as one of the most enjoyable aspects of our time working as a board member here. It's just so wonderful to come together and hear the stories of the fine achievements of so many of our talented students. You can see many of them standing around the room tonight because, as you know, Fountains Restaurant is a training environment for our students and we're very lucky to have the opportunity tonight, as Neil is not, to sample the delicious food and service and the great hospitality that the students have prepared for us. Uh, we were at a dinner here last week and it was a great surprise to us to learn that we were being served by first year hospitality students who were at a very early stage in their training. The, the training is magnificent and I'm sure you'll enjoy the service, the food and the hospitality that we're about to provide for you. And we want all of our students, not just those in this room, all of our students to go further, study more and enhance their career prospects. If you have a look at your program, you'll see that for many of the award winners tonight, there is that common theme of students who really worked very hard to realise their potential, exceeded their expectations and produced something special. And so regardless of the result tonight, they are truly poised for great things. And they exemplify something that I think comes through the AFL a little bit and certainly through some famous golfers, which is that lovely little phrase, it's a funny thing, but the harder I try, the luckier I get. So people around this room, come of them have already said to me, I was very lucky to get here tonight. Well, maybe you were, but probably you worked very hard as well to be here. So there are nine students here tonight who've been identified as exemplifying excellence. Now think about that. Nine out of the 40,000 students that came through our doorways last year that is something to be extremely proud of. The odds of getting there have got to be very narrow and it really does come down to hard work and excellence. And we're very proud of those students here as we are proud of some of our former students. And this is the bit where we get to brag a little bit about some of those. Uh, we, we think about Gerald Rector, who's the Chief Executive Officer now of Vic Health, Frank Kimura, who owns the Movida chain, Ricky Swallow, whose sculptor art is now displayed in London, Vienna, Venice and Los Angeles. Maddie Richardson, former AFL footballer. Toby Puttick, former celebrity chef and owner of Kitchen Cat. So there's some fine people who've gone before the group who are with us tonight as award winners. And as we love to say each year, absolutely no pressure on the group here tonight. <laughs> But the winner of tonight goes on to represent us at the Victorian Awards and the winner of the Victorian Awards goes on to represent the state at the Australian Awards. So uh, we, we will be looking very anxiously and with great anticipation to um, listen to our award winners tonight. Can I finish in saying thank you to the dedication of our wonderful teaching staff, many of whom truly go above and beyond to provide support and encouragement and in a year such as last year where TAFEs underwent a fair degree of disturbance to their normal running styles, uh, I think it's even more credit that our staff continue to do the job they've always done, which is to nurture and train and lead students. Staff, your contribution is invaluable and I'd be very grateful if you would pass that on to your respective centres uh, when you're meeting them next. Thank you. So on behalf of the Box Hill Institute group, I welcome you all. Please enjoy the evening. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, Entree will now be served and we will join you again shortly to announce a very special award. Thank you very much. Kashif Boons attended high school in Kuwait. Now that's interesting because I spend quite a lot of my year in Kuwait as does our CEO, so we're, we're pretty familiar with this place, and completed his studies in accounting and financial services at Box Hill Institute in 2006. After he completed his advanced diploma of accounting, he attained his degree from Swinburne with one and a half years credit for his studies at Box Hill. Shortly after, Kashif was approached by AFL Victoria 
Uh, that stands for the Australian Football League, for those who aren't... No, you did know that, yes. To work on developing their multicultural participation and has been promoted to the position of Multicultural Programs Coordinator for the AFL. Kashif devotes his professional and personal time to the integration of migrants into the Australian community. He has worked as an advisor for the Victorian Taxi Directorate to provide input into issues faced by Victorian taxi drivers and is the co-founder of the Pakistani Students Association. Kashif is also an ambassador for the South Asian Task Force for Domestic Violence and was the 2011 recipient of the Victorian Multicultural Award for Excellence in the Community Services category. Thank you for letting uh, us share your story, Kashif, and please join me on stage while we view your video profile. Uh, I studied advanced diploma of accounting at Vox and Clay. Uh, the reason I chose this course was um, because at that stage in my life I wanted to be an accountant and I had a look at, num uh, at a number of courses across a number of institutes and uh, the Vox Clay advanced diploma of accounting was the one that attracted me the most and that's why I chose it. At the moment I'm working for uh, AFL Victoria as a uh, multicultural programs coordinator where I'm looking out for the state multicultural programs run by AFL while I'm also working uh, at coordinating the national multicultural programs as well. So doing a couple of projects nationally and then uh, running the programs uh, statewide. The time that I spent uh, at Vauxhall Tape was very memorable because it, the Vauxhall Tape had that community feel. Everyone knew everyone. It was like a close-knit family. I knew all my teachers. All the teachers knew me. Uh, look, I think I will be a worthy winner uh, of Boxel uh, TIFF uh, Enterprising Graduate of the Year because uh, I've, I think I've demonstrated enough leadership in the community, shown a lot of initiative and done a lot of things where I have not only, you know, every time I'm a good ambassador for Boxel TIFF, every time I get credited for a success, it's also a success for Boxel TIFF because I always uh, recognize Boxel TIFF for getting me to where I am. I would have not been, uh, I would have not learned the skills which I have, which I use in my job every day if I had not gone to Vauxhall Tape. Congratulations, Kashif. And I now ask our Chief Executive Officer, Mr. John Maddock, to hand over the Enterprising Graduate of the Year Award. Thank you very much. Thank you, John and Kashif. I now have the pleasure of inviting Julian Murphy, our 2012 Vocational Student of the Year, to speak. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A big congratulations to this year's 2013 Student of the Year nominees. All of you should be extremely proud of yourself. At last year's Student of the Year Awards Night, Nick Green spoke to us. Nick was part of the awesome foursome team. He won two gold medals at the 1992 and 1996 Olympic Games. Nick mentioned something that really summed up last year's nominees. And this message also applies to this year's Student of the Year nominees as well. And that is, all of you are high achievers and people of great character. What does this really mean? I'll leave you with that thought for the moment. In 2011, I came to Box Hill Institute to study sports development. I had a huge passion for sport and really wanted to work in the sporting industry. I thought to myself I had nothing to lose at the end of the day and I wanted to give everything a try. At times I knew I was going to make mistakes along the way but I was more keen on learning from those mistakes so I could do it better next time. The opportunities at Box Hill Institute were excellent. Working with people from El Cairo, pairing sporting programs for students down at Box Hill North Primary School putting together personal training programs 
for clients and preparing sporting activities and also working on events such as the Trev Basketball Tournament and also getting the opportunity to volunteer at Big V. A great opportunity came up with me via Sark. And they were looking at having a sport and rec club for the first time. So I decided to get involved. The next thing that happened, I was the president of the sport and rec club, which at the time was a little bit overwhelming, but in saying that, I was super excited by this challenge this presented. The club started off with no funds, no members, no sponsors. In a short space of time, running sausage sizzles at lunchtime, and then before you knew it, we had 30 members. We continued to grow the club, getting more sponsors on board. Towards the end of the year, we ended up running a sports trivia night, where we had 80 people attend this night, which provided many laughs throughout the night. Then a couple of weeks later, we held a lawn bowls evening. Despite the thunderstorms coming down, it ended up still being a fantastic night to finish, on, finish up the year on a high. As I mentioned before, we started off with no funds, no members and no sponsors. We ended up raising over $1,000 for the Sport and Rec Club, another $1,000 for a charity group, and we had 40 members by the end of the year, and also managed to organise around 10 sponsors uh, throughout the year for our events. It just shows with a little bit of hard work that anything is possible. After leaving Box Hill Institute, I gained employment at Tennis Australia, where I'm still there today and thoroughly enjoying it as a duty manager role. I still stayed in contact with one of my teachers, Simon Carlite. I was lucky enough to work at some of the big sporting events such as the Melbourne Ironman and the Melbourne Marathon last year, which provided me with great experience what is required to run some of the world's best sporting events. The Melbourne Ironman in particular gave me a great insight to all the preparations that needs to occur to put together a big race like this. The first thing I learnt very quickly was the commitment that you need in events because you, you actually your day actually starts at 4.30 a.m. in the morning. So um, it, it was one of the busiest events I've ever worked at and it gave me a great um, understanding what it is um, to be involved in events and all that. And the demand on the athletes is extremely uh, high. I was responsible for the male change room tent and also the transition area. My day, yes, uh, did finish at 9pm that night, but overall the experience was uh, very worthwhile and I got a hell of a lot out of it. I continued to push myself so I could get the best out of myself. At this year's Australian Open, I ended up getting promoted to the supervisor of the information service team. I had been working in this team for over three years where I'd previously been a team leader during the Australian Open. This role meant overseeing 78 staff and overseeing all administration and operational tasks each day of the tournament. And I only had uh, four days off in January, so I got through. Uh, I also just recently been appointed uh, head umpires coach down at the Yarra Junior Football League. Uh, this uh, Yarra Junior Football League is the second largest junior competition in Victoria. We uh, have over 260 umpires on our list and we have to point to, um, to over 120 games each week. One of my other responsibilities working with AFL Victoria where we run an umpire school base uh, academy uh, down at Camberwell Grammar School. Um, so instead of the students there um, playing footy or soccer, uh, they give umpiring a go. It just shows with a bit of hard work, continued perseverance, you will have great success. Things might not always happen straight away, like in my case with the Australian Open Yarra Junior Football League, but I just kept on trying to get myself, uh, get the best out of myself. And this message I would like to pass on to you. You know, you never know if you keep working hard, uh, you might find yourself with that promotion. So don't give up when the times get hard. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the Rotary Club for all their support they've given me and continued support uh, towards Box Hill Institute, so thank you. Lastly, a big thank you to all my teachers, in particular John Gillard, Lisa Ross, Simon Carla and Shane Lousy for their nomination. I was extremely fortunate enough to win this award last year. It certainly would have not have been possible with their, without their great support of my teachers who continue to push me so I could get the best out of myself and the continued guidance um, from them after I finished up at Box Hill Institute. It has been a great 
experience by winning the Student of the Year Award last year, which has opened up many great opportunities for me. I'm very grateful for this, and so thank you once again to John, Lisa, Simon, Shane, Box Hill Institute and SART. Lastly, uh, to this year's 2013 Student of the Year nominees, congratulations once again. I'm sure at times last year you would have felt under the pump with your studies, but you always found a way to get that last assignment in on time. All of you have worked extremely hard with your studies, balancing that with voluntary, part-time work, sporting commitments and your social life. All of you are high achievers and people of great character. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Julian. Um, it's interesting that the AFL has been a, a very good employer, isn't it great? Um, and, uh, and good on the Melbourne Football Club for uh, what's going to be a great year this year. Uh, um, yes, I invite you all to enjoy uh, your main meal uh, before we hear from our guest speaker. Thank you very much. I'm not too sure if it is a good thing or a bad thing, but <laughs> I am here anyway. Uh, so after I finished my high school in Kuwait, uh, there were not too many uh, study options, uh, as uh, many of our friends here are aware. And that's why they've opened the college there, which is a fantastic opportunity for, uh, for people living there. But uh, there was uh, not many opportunities uh, to study, and I was not even interested either. So <laughs> I, didn't I didn't really want to study at that stage. I wanted to just uh, work, and uh, I found a job in engineering and uh, did that for a couple of years. But in those couple of years, what I realized was that without a former education, I wouldn't get too far. I probably would uh, get to a certain level and then would not be able to make any career progress after that. So then I got a little bit serious about what I wanted to do uh, in life and uh, I looked at my study options. And to be honest, Australia was not at my radar at that stage. I was thinking more USA and UK. Uh, my dad was push pushing me to USA, but I told him they don't play cricket there, so I'm not gonna go there. So <laughs> that topic was quickly, quickly done and dusted. But, uh, but uh, as it happens, I used to play cr cricket with uh, some Australians, and one of them just one day told me that, why don't you go to Melbourne if you want to study further? And as uh, soon as he said that, my eyes lit up because uh, Pakistan won their Cricket World Cup in 1992 at MCG. So <laughs> a, d a decision was made then and there, and uh, all I had to work out was which college or university to pick. Uh, so I started my research, and uh, there were uh, a number of universities, but I came across a word which I did not know how to pronounce. It was TAFE or TAFE or something, but it was T-A-F-E. I didn't know what it was. But uh, uh, as I looked further into that word, I realized that that's exactly what I was looking for. I had been out of uh, uh, the education system for a couple of years. And as I said, I was never the one for studies, uh, so I was a bit nervous. And uh, university seemed a bit daunting to me. So, and TAFE, uh, TAFE was not only, uh, uh, I, I found it was, would be more um, easier pathway for me, but also it was more economical as well, and good value for money. So uh, I chatted with a uh, few people, and Boxel TAFE, I was told, is rated very highly. and. So I ended up coming here, and that's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made because I've, wherever I am today, it's because of those initial days and months and years that I spent at Boxel Tafe. Uh, but this is not about Boxel Tafe. This is about me. So I'll just, I'll just, I'll just uh, continue on. So with the uh, Boxel Tafe, uh, when I started, um, I obviously came into accounting. Uh, that's what I wanted to do at the time. And uh, I did my advanced diploma. During the, my time at Boxel Tafe, I was able, obviously I was an international student, so I did not have any family or friends here. Uh, so those times can be really, really tough for you, and sometimes you just want to pack your bags and go back. Uh, but from the orientation onwards, because of all the students were so nice to me, and uh, we had this community feeling, and uh, 
heaps of on-campus activities which I started to engage in as well. And I started building those networks which uh, some of them are still with me. And those, uh, those networks gave me a sense of belonging and also uh, you know, kept, me on the, uh, kept me serious. And for some reason, I did really well at my studies um, uh, because the teachers were so helpful. And uh, I excelled at my studies. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, when I finished my advanced diploma, it was not an issue for me to get into Swinburne University because Vauxhall had an uh, arrangement with them. So I went there. At that moment, I still wanted to do accounting. Um, didn't hadn't changed my mind. So I uh, went to Swinburne University for a couple of years, year and a half to be precise. Finished my accounting degree there, and uh, I I did uh, very well there as well. It was high distinction. I obviously worked hard for it, and uh, I, I was uh, when I finished my degree, I was like, this is it, you know. I, I've got it now. Finished my degree, I will have a job. I will settle down. Life is going to be, you know, a lot more easier from here on. But uh, I had not actually been back to Pakistan to see my parents for last three and a half years because I was studying, and uh, I just wanted to finish it before I go because I didn't want to lose my focus. So once I finished my degree, the the economy was booming. There were plenty of jobs in the market, and I knew that I would get a job straight away. My teachers were encouraging me. And I just uh, wanted to leave straight away. I went back to Pakistan, spent a couple of months there, saw my family. Uh, when I came back, it was a changed world. Uh, the economy had busted, as you would uh, know, in 2008, in the middle of it. And we were in the middle of uh, the global financial crisis. So there were not many jobs around. Uh, there were uh, a lot of um, uh, people competing for, uh, for jobs, and they had a lot more experience than I did. Uh, also, some of, those, some of you uh, who are aware of how the migration system works, uh, or, or I did not have uh, a permanent residence at that time, and, uh, which meant that I, I could not work. There was no stability with me. An employer would not want to invest in me because what if after six months I had to go back, or after eight months I had to go back? So, so in a tight job market, that was a massive disadvantage. And uh, I was very low, uh, low at confidence at that, sit at that stage, and I just wanted to go back, but spoke with a uh, few people, and they, they told me just keep at it, and I kept at it. I kept applying for jobs day, night, evening. Uh, hardly even got an interview, but I just did not stay still in that time. I did any job that came my way. So I did, um, uh, I did pizza delivery. I worked in a factory. Um, I did security, security, and I also, uh, you guys probably have already stereotyped, I drove cabs as well, so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I drove cabs, whatever came my way, I kept working, I worked hard, I made sure that, you know, I was doing something with my life, but at the same time, I kept looking for, for, for a job. Um, I came across a lot of hardships, because when I was outside uh, in the real world, uh, obviously, you know, uh, some people are not as supportive as others, and uh, I came across a lot of discrimination and racism at, some, at times as well. And those times can be really, really, really hard for you. But they actually inspired me that, you know, when I, to help other people who are in the same boat. So because I was not uh, doing a full-time job, I started to volunteer a lot of my time helping other international students and new migrants and help them integrate and assimilate while also trying to address the issues that they were facing. So I was trying to do something with my time all the time. Uh, I did get a uh, couple of uh, accounting jobs, uh, but they were contractual basis, a couple of months here and there, and nothing stable. Uh, eventually, I did end up getting a, a proper accounting job. Uh, did it for six months. Uh, and uh, But in those six months, because I had been so much, uh, so, so involved in community work, when I did accounting, after six months, I realized, look, I probably don't want to do accounting for the rest of my life. Uh, trust me, I was good at it. It's not that I was bad or anything. I <laughs> boxed tape and Sinvan did a good job with me. I was good, good at what I did, but I just didn't see myself to be an accountant for the rest of my life. I wanted to do something different. I just did not know what it was. And as it happens, one day I was having a chat with one of my friends. And uh, she said that, why don't you try to find a job in community development? You've got heap, heaps of experience in the field. You've got the business background as well. 
and uh, maybe you will, uh, you will be able to do something with that. Now, I had never looked at community development as a profession. For me, it was a passion, not a profession. For me, it was something I did because I felt like I must. It was not something I did to make money out of or, or anything. So it was a change of mindset. But when I thought about it, I was like, everyone talks about doing things that you love. So if I can do things that I love and still get paid for it, maybe not as much as the accountants do, it will be a good thing. So I started looking for jobs. And uh, I think my luck was, to, uh, was starting to change. And I came across it, uh, this job. Uh, it was called Global Programs Coordinator. So it was a partnership between Essendon Football Club and Cricket Victoria. And basically what they were trying to do were using sport as a vehicle for social inclusion. So they used to, uh, so cricket during the summer and football during the winter, taking people to the game and help them build those local connections. So it was uh, a job too good to be true. I just looked at the cricket part, didn't worry much about Essendon <laughs> at that stage and uh, applied for the role. I got called in for the interview, and I was really nervous because I had, I had been in Australia five years. I had never been to a football game at that stage. I had no idea what footy was, and um, I, I sort of barracked for Geelong because it was the first Victorian team to win a premiership after I came to Australia. <laughs> but uh, that, was, that was it. Uh, one thing uh, someone told me very early on, and uh, no, no offense, but I was told very early on, that one day you will barrack for a team, but make sure when you do, it's not Collingwood. <laughs> so, 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 so I, I, I remember that. Uh, but as I said, I, I've got very good friends at Collingwood and have no disrespect to them, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I was, um, when I, uh, I knew that I had to go for this job interview at Essendon Football Club, I was very nervous. And um, so I had to actually sit down and research. So I literally researched everything about football and, uh, and about SNN. And uh, one day before the interview, I asked one of my mates, uh, who is obviously a footy fanatic, asked him to interview me. And, and this is about preparation. This is about preparation. It's not uh, just about you know g getting up and going to an interview unprepared. What I'm trying to tell you, especially the new graduates, that even if you are applying for a job which has nothing to do with, which is something totally new, research it. Research the organization that you're going for because it always matters. So when I went there, I was honest. I didn't tell them that I have always been a footy fan. I was honest, I was upfront. I told them, look, I don't know much about football. I've never been to a game, but this is what I found about your club. And I know you, uh, SNN had won 16 premierships, most successful club. And uh, also, they were doing a lot of work in community space, which I really liked. Uh, so I did my interview. Luckily, I got the job. It was during the summer. So uh, my first test was easier. I had to work with Cricket Victoria. But then again, they're giving me 2,000 tickets for Bush Rangers versus uh, you know, Redbacks and asking me, can you bring 2,000 people to this game? I'm like, do you get 2,000 people over the whole season? <laughs> like, they're ex but so it's, it was not easy, but I, uh, I was able to, to do that consistently over the cricket season. So when I went to uh, SNN for the football season, I was high on confidence. And I was luckily, I was able to do a good job with SNN. And uh, in those two or three months, they offered me to work full time with them in their multi in their community department as a multicultural officer. So now this is totally different, right? Now they are expecting me to go and teach kids how to play footy. <laughs> now I have ha I've just been to my first football game three months ago. Don't know half of the rules, which I'm sure all umpires don't either. But yeah, <laughs> and we were working on it, aren't we? <laughs> so we were. Uh, uh, so this was a job where, which was very hands-on. It's not about taking people just to the games. It's not about doing club tour. It's about actually running footy clinics. So I told them, look, do you really expect me to, this jo do, do, to do this job? Or you know, it's some kind of joke. They said, no, we really like what you're doing. We don't want you to be working at cricket because we are afraid you will get a full-time job there. We want you here. And what we're happy to do is in this first three months, we will give you a resource. So 
someone who knows footy will go with you to deliver the clinics. You pick that knowledge up. If after three months it's working fine, we'll continue uh, with your employment. Otherwise, we can see what we can do. So I took up that challenge. It was a challenge for me. I was very nervous uh, because what happened once, I before this, I tried to run a footy clinic once at uh, another TAFE, Homesland TAFE. So I've gone there for international students, teaching them, uh, uh, and they wanted me to do some activity, right? Because I'm promoting for them to come to a footy game, and they wanted me to come and promote that to them. So I've gone to, they wanted me to run an activity. I've gone to uh, another guy in the community department asking him, can you help me out? He's like, yeah, no worries, man. Just take a handball target, and that's it. Run a handball target cl clinic, and that would be fine. I was like, fair enough. How do you actually do that? So. <laughs> He's put this handball target, showed me how to put it together, and he's like, then you just put the footy through it and that's it. All right, okay, fair enough, simple, easy enough. I took the handball target, took the footies, went to the TAFE, and uh, put the hand handball target up and showing students how to put the footy through. Now one of the teacher comes up to me and she's like, why don't you ask them to actually handball the footy? Because I was just asking them to throw it like this. <laughs> so, so, so that, 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 that's where, I, and I was like, what is she on about? So I told her, and I, I, I just told her, look, you know, that would be too hard for them, but actually it was too hard for me. I didn't. So, so that's where my football knowledge was when they offered me this job, running football clinics. So I had three months to prove myself, learn how to drop punt, learn how to do everything, and, uh, and bring myself up to speed. But I took the challenge. Uh, did that for three months, um, and uh, they were happy to give me the job after that, which uh, m obviously means that you know I was doing something right. But I think that you know I've d done a huge disservice to footy industry, and you might not see any players coming through the northwest region for a long, long time, <laughs> unless they go and get some coaching, proper coaching from someone else. Uh, but look, a lot of it was about relationship building, about new initiatives, about uh, getting out of my comfort zone, and about bringing people to football and using football as a vehicle for building social capital and social connections. And not only helping the multicultural communities to integrate, but also helping mainstream community to welcome those communities. Because, you know, the real challenge is not me uh, you know, convincing someone to take up footy. The real challenge starts when they actually take up my advice and walk into that local football club. And if th that local football club does not provide them a welcoming environment, they would never walk in again. So that was a part of my job as well. So I worked hard on that. And luckily, six months into the job, I got a tap on the shoulder from AFL Victoria. They wanted me to come and work for them. Uh, so there I was, I had the people in the position, in the job that I was doing at SNN for six years in different clubs, in some instances, six years, five years, four years. And here I am, no footy background, never played a game of footy, don't even know how to kick the ball properly. I'm not saying there, now don't, don't interpret it as lax employment standards. <laughs> it's, it's just that, um, you know, I was still able to demonstrate that I could do the job. And they, this, uh, AFL Victoria identified that and they came and offered me a job and I took it. And that's what I'm doing now. But all the while, uh, when I got these jobs, even though this job was, a, 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 this job suited my passion and it was about things that I loved, I did not give up on volunteering because for me that was not an end to end a means. It was something, it is something that I'm still very passionate about. So I still continue to do that. I still continue to volunteer in different spaces, try to help people out wherever I can because not only it helps m m them get better, but it also makes me better. It makes me a better person. It gives me a sense of fulfillment and it gives me a lot of satisfaction. And that's what I continue to do today. So this is, uh, I've been very lucky, uh, and today is just another instance that I've been uh, rewarded uh, with an award. And I've been lucky enough to be recognized a number of times, as it has been mentioned, through different awards. But 
there are a lot of people out there who are doing a lot better job than I am, and they don't even get a pat on the shoulder. And uh, those people uh, are, the, are, are the, I think, the backbone of this country. This country owes a lot to its volunteers, be it in the football field, health field, social sector, and, uh, and I have a lot of respect for them. And I think uh, this, uh, these achievements that I, I, I have, uh, they are the unsung heroes. And, um, and I'm really happy that I have this opportunity to actually come here and uh, be in front of so many amazing people. Uh, look, you guys have already put in the hard yards. I'm talking about the vocational graduates. You've done the hard yards. That's why you're here out of 40,000 students just nine, it's a massive, massive uh, achievement. And um, what I would like to tell you, what my advice to you will be, that just keep working hard. Just what, uh, what you have done to get here is, what going is, is the same thing that's going to take you further. And rem never ever let your study pigeonhole you. L if you think two years down the track that IT was not for you, you want to do something else, go and do it. Because you know what? Who knows, uh, that, that, that will take you a lot further than what IT will. And that's what I did with my life, and it worked for me, and it, I've seen a lot of people, and it has worked for them. Ahmed Saad, who plays for St. Kilda, he was a soccer player. He took up footy when he was 18, and he's 22 now, and he's playing AFL footy. So, you know, that's, uh, that can be true in any, in any field, in any profession. If you guys have a dream, Chase that dream. And look, you don't always have to be in community sector or in IT sector or in accounting sector. Because if you're passionate about m making money, then go and make that money. Because we in community sector are always looking for sponsors. So, so, <laughs> so you know, if you're, whatever you're passionate about, it, passionate about, go and chase your dream. Work hard for it. And also try to get, as many, get to know as many people as you can. Networking is the key. A lot of time, it's not about what you know. It's also about who you know. And uh, that was very true for myself. And wherever I go, I try to connect with as many people as possible, uh, try to exchange my business cards. And, you know, and also, within my job, it helps me to come up with new projects and new initiatives all the time. And also, you know, if you're applying for a job, there is a selection criteria, and it says it's not necessary. We just need a, a you know, resume, please send them a cover letter as well. Put them, uh, address that selection criteria, go the extra mile. The, it's very competitive out there, and unless you don't go the extra mile, it will, it will be very hard for you. So I guess I've bored you for long enough. Uh, I wouldn't go any further. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoy the rest of your night. Once again, thank you for having me, and congratulations on your achievements. Thank you. Fantastic, Kashif. That's that's wonderful. I'd, I'd like to point out, first of all, if um, on the basis that Kashif became a, a Geelong supporter, he would have had to arrive in Australia in 1964 to be a Melbourne supporter. Uh, all right, and uh, and also the that 1992 uh, World Cup match at the MCG. Now I was there. I saw that match, and I was barracking for Pakistan because, of course, they were they were playing against England. And uh, there's nothing more that uh, an Australian crowd likes than to see the English get beaten. So, and the two champions on that day, I believe, were Imran Khan and Javed Miandad, two of the legends of Pakistani cricket. So, fantastic thing. Um, Kashif, that's, I've been coming to these evenings for a long time, and I think that's uh, possibly the best speech I've heard. So, that was just a wonderful thing. So, well done. <laughs> Uh, this year we have a truly uh, worthy group of nominees. I hope you'll join me in finding their stories inspiring as we now come to presenting the 2013 Vocational Student of the Year Awards. Uh, we'll be showing packages of footage this evening which highlight, uh, highlight our nominees. Uh, can the following students please join me on stage while we show their film footage 
along with Anna Laird, a representative for Neil Angus MP, who we asked to present the first group of awards. Uh, if you could join me, uh, Jonathan Herman and Elizabeth Stewart and Jenny Hillman, who is not a student but is representing Levi Dowsett, who unfortunately is not well and can't be here today. I studied audio production at Box Hill uh, because I wanted to join the music industry. I think I was nominated for Student of the Year because I worked hard during my course. A couple of people I'd like to thank would be Tim Opie for nominating me for this award. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Adam Quaife for being a great teacher. George Papanicolo for being a great teacher. Uh, I'm going to forget lots of people. Roger Elsop for being a great teacher. Dr Peter Myers for helping me through my time, being a great leader at Box Hill and my family and friends for putting up with me, my obsession, and uh, special thanks to Marcus Knight, a friend of mine. The thing I enjoyed most at Box Hill was hanging out with friends uh, that were also musicians, talking about music, talking about uh, the music industry all day, every day. It's brilliant. I'd just like to say a big thanks to Tim Opie for nominating me for this award. A uh, big thanks to all the students and teachers at Box Hill for their ongoing support to get me through this degree and I had an excellent time. The course that I studied at Box Hill Institute was the Diploma of Sports Development and Athlete Support Services. I chose to, to do this course because it involves sport and that's my favourite activity to do. Also because it, uh, it had smaller class sizes and that catered for my, my needs in the class and the teachers could help me one-on-one. -on -one. There was a lot of practical experience that we got from the course. One of those practical experiences was with Sportica. That was my work placement. So I got involved with Sportica, which was teaching children a, a range of sports. And I did that beyond the requirements of the course. And, and now, I'm, now I'm employed with that to this day. Uh, in the future, I hope to be uh, continuing working with Sportica as well as my tennis coaching that I'm currently doing. I'd just like to thank everyone for helping me get to where I am today, for, like my parents as well as my teachers, and I'd like to thank Box Hill for uh, doing a great job in increasing my confidence and skills and knowledge in the area of sport. I studied a Bachelor of Applied Music with a composition major at Box Hill Institute and I started it because I really, really, really wanted to learn how to score music for film, television, multimedia. My role models are composers who are working in the field, you know, doing what I aspire to do. So I loved um, some of my lecturers are actually my role models, but also I uh, aspire to the likes of Thomas Newman or Lisa Gerard. My teachers at Vauxhall Institute are working industry professionals. They're experienced, they're knowledgeable, and they were really supportive. I'd love to continue my studies and I intend to do some postgraduate studies in music, specifically film scoring. I would like to thank my parents, Mark and Deirdre Stewart, for their support and assistance during my studies. It has been a very long haul for me and they've been so supportive during that time. I think it's definitely brought us closer together. I'd also like to thank um, my employers, Ballarat Secondary College, Mount Clear College, for being very flexible when it come, came to my study and work schedule. Studying at Box Hill Institute and studying my degree in composition has been hands down the best thing I've ever done for myself and my only regret would be that I wish I'd done it sooner. <laughs> well done everyone, thank you Anna. 
Uh, now we'll show our second video for the night. If Institute Board Member Glenn Walker uh, can please join me on stage along with the following nominees. Michael Swank, Iris Radovich and Samuel Taylor. I've just completed the Bachelor of Computer Systems Networking at Box Hill Institute and I chose that course because I found myself in a position uh, where my role changed at work and I was starting to be looked to to do more of the IT stuff around the office and uh, the, there were some serious gaps in my knowledge uh, when it came to IT and I, and I decided that I would do the, the, the degree with Box Hill because they had a very practical uh, uh, approach to doing uh, IT and, and a lot of industry support and, and, uh, uh, and it worked well with, with my work situation. In the future I'd like to uh, continue working in the not-for-profit industry, um, possibly though as, a, as an IT consultant. Um, the, the course has really broadened my horizons in terms of the scale at which I'm able to work now. One of the things I really enjoyed about my time at Box Hill was the attention with the teachers and the time interacting with other students, uh, as well as the, uh, the way in which the learning built upon one, one topic built upon another uh, throughout, the, throughout the degree. I studied advanced diploma of audio production here at Box Hill. And the reason I studied, well, there was a few reasons. Uh, the main reason was that uh, I'd had an accident which uh, led me to finally have the courage to do what I had been wanting to do for a long time but was a little bit afraid of because uh, I thought that I would never get my head around software and uh, signal flow and physics of sound. But um, uh, I finally gathered the courage and and applied for it uh, with the hope that I'd be able to um, realise my dream of um, recording and working with younger artists in helping them work on their art and record their music. There, there are a lot of amazing teachers here at Box Hill. Uh, I don't know if I have time to name all of them, but um, I've developed a different skill other than the skill I was meant to be taught from each one of these teachers. Thanks to Box Hill for, uh, for getting me to where I am at the moment. I'm, I'm really, really grateful. <laughs> That's all I can say. I, I've learned so much here and I've met some amazing people and, um, and I've been inspired and I'm doing it. <laughs> I studied the Diploma of Marketing at Box Hill Institute. I did that course because I organised my own community fun run. It was called the Mental Health Fun Run and through the experience of marketing that event it got me interested in doing the Diploma of Marketing. I, uh, joined, I got involved with the Mental Health Fun Run um, through the Yarra Rangers Youth Services. Um, I got involved with the Young Leaders Program and the purpose of the program was to um, develop a community uh, project that, um, that um, had a positive impact on the community. The experiences I enjoyed most about Box Hill Institute was the interaction between the other students. The other students were great to get to know um, because they came from all walks of life and they came from all different fields of marketing. Sarah was my only teacher. Um, she, did the whole, she did the whole course you know, she was just endlessly passionate about what she did, um, could relate to people from all walks of life and you know, took, took time out of her own time to ensure that her students got the best out of the service that Box Hill Institute provides. Thank you very much and congratulations to all three. Okay, please join me in welcoming to stage Institute Board Member Ian Hind and our final group of nominees. 
They are Monica Alou, Hassan <laughs> Altumbas, and Darker Schultz. Uh, well, I study community services certificate four at CAA. Why? Because uh, I like to work with people. In my spare time, I'm busy with my grandkids and my own children. And also I do knitting because I like knitting. 2006, I went to Canberra to present with Sudan, Southern Sudanese women on the MOVE action. And 2012, when the uh, Governor General came here, I met with, uh, with her about uh, Africa community elders to present the issue facing us here. Uh, on my time at CAE, I joined a lot of things, uh, meeting different uh, people, students, and sometimes we do to go uh, outing for a uh, long time. So I enjoy a lot meeting people, different people, different from different country. I want to say um, I'm happy with the teachers at CAE. They are very friendly, good people. At Box Hill Institute, I studied an associate degree in commerce, applied, ideally to take on the pathway of becoming an accountant. The teachers that I've come across here um, have been in invaluable. They're, they're fantastic. They, they're supportive. They don't just take a teaching approach, they take the approach of a, of a mentor, as a coach, as a guide. Um, they help you develop not only your set of skills in understanding the topics on hand, but also to improve the way you conduct yourself by acquiring the knowledge that was shared with us in the classrooms. They're all very caring and supportive. Um, the students were, it was more of a family environment opposed to being uh, sort of like a purely academic and just student-based uh, centre to attend. One of the things that I enjoyed most about studying here is the environment that the, not only the staff but the students also created as well. Um, it was a friendly environment, it was an approachable environment, it was a supportive environment which made it all the easier to actually attend class and be participating in um, the, the class work etc. Um, and I think these were very important to me, being a mature age student, that I needed a supportive environment to get me through my studies. Ideally, I'd like to continue studying. Um, I've developed a passion for studying, and I think Box Hill had a major contribution to, towards that. One of, the, one of the most important things that I would like to mention about Box Hill is that regardless of what hardship or personal difficulties one may be going through as a student, it's, Box Hill is definitely an environment that will help you get through it. I studied the Bachelor of Hospitality Management at Box Hill because ever since I was in high school, I really wanted to do management and something with organisational skills. And when I started working in the hospitality industry, I really enjoyed the work with people. I enjoyed the practical work experience as well as the research projects that I had to do throughout my course. And I also enjoyed the legal and accounting subjects that I did. I always found my teachers really helpful and really friendly. Um, I especially found it helpful that they all had experience in the field they were teaching. So my accounting teacher was an accountant and my law teacher was an actual lawyer. In the future I hope to finish my degree which I'm currently studying which is a Masters in Laws. And I hope to work in the hospitality industry and then apply the legal studies I will have finished and combine the two degrees. I believe I'd be a worthy winner of the Student of the Year Award because I believe I can show students that with a good work ethic and a good teaching environment like Box Hill has, you can achieve your dreams. I'd like to thank my parents, without whose especially financial support I wouldn't be in Australia at all. I'd um, also like to thank my boyfriend whose emotional support has enabled me to achieve the marks that I got. And I'd like to t thank um, John Ferrito who has been the best teacher and friend that I've ever had and he's actually the one who nominated me so he's amazing. <laughs>
Thank you, Ian, and thank you to all our nominees. Now, we will announce our three vocational student of the year finalists plus the 2000 and vocational student of the year after dessert. So please enjoy your meal. Hmm. Uh, for those with perfect pitch, that's a C sharp. Okay. Nobody contradicted me, good, okay. Uh, uh, hope you're enjoying the dessert, that was beautiful, wasn't it? And we return to our Vocational Student of the Year presentation. Uh, for those people who ignored our earlier warning about telephones, tonight we have an exceptional group of nominees, and as such, John Manick, our CEO, has decided to also recognise our top three nominees with a gift certificate voucher that can be used for items including credit towards tuition or short courses, Fountain's Restaurant, Aveda Products or Services, Hairdressing, The Bookshop, Pets on Elga, Whitehorse Fitness, Flowers on Elga, or Lighting and Santa, which are all our authenticated uh, training workplaces here at the Institute. We will then announce which of these finalists is the Box Hill Institute Group Vocational Student of the Year for 2013. At this point, I'd like to ask Julian Murphy to return to the stage to name the finalists and to announce the winner. I also ask John Maddock if he would like to present the finalists with their vouchers. Uh, I'll say the inevitable drum roll. Uh, Julian, uh, would you please announce the finalist of the Vocational Student of the Year? Uh, so congratulations, everyone. Uh, so the finals are Iris Radovic. Hassan Alter Bus. <laughs> and Elizabeth Stewart. Thank you, John and Julian, and congratulations to our finalists. Uh, please remain on stage with us, uh, John and Julian. Uh, will you now announce the winner of the 2013 Box Hill Institute Group Vocational Student of the Year? Iris Radovic. <laughs> Congratulations to all three of you and fantastic. Now, Iris, would you like to say a few words? <laughs> the answer is yes, you would. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, first of all, to um, my wonderful supporters and teachers, Michael and Jeff, for nominating me tonight. I wouldn't be here without you. And thank you so much to the Box Hill Spirit, who, which I think is really incredible. I've been through a lot of things in the world and I can really say that I've felt some incredible things at this place. And, and I thank you all for you know, being a part of that and creating that and, and being such a wonderful uh, space where incredible things happen. I also want to say I, I'm really humbled because that was such an amazing group of people. Like I, I just have to say, I, if, if I would love to um, to give you all a really big round of applause because I thought that you're all really incredible <laughs> and amazing. And uh, I thought.
thought that um, the, the last year's winners and people who have, who we've, whose path we're following in were really inspiring. I was pretty much sitting there for a lot of the time with my mouth wide open. And um, thank you so much for your words. Uh, I don't think I know what else to say other than that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, thank you so much. And I'm, yeah, thanks. And I, I, I want to share um, this, this, this feeling that I feel right now, I think, uh, that the other people who were nominated tonight, the amazing human beings that are here, uh, deserve that feeling just as much, and I'm shining it at you. So thank you. Uh, congratulations to Iris and all our finalists and everyone here tonight. And can I now ask uh, John Maddock to provide the final toast for this evening. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yes, you can, you can, <laughs> yes, right there. Haven't we heard some uh, fabulous stories tonight from uh, all of our nine vocational uh, students finalists and also our enterprising uh, graduate of the year? And, uh, I'm sure everybody's been impressed as I was. It was, uh, it was absolutely fantastic to hear the ach achievements that uh, each, each and every one of you have, uh, have had there. It's my, uh, my role now also to say thank you to uh, uh, a lot of people that have ensured tonight has gone uh, successfully here as well. So I'd like to uh, firstly say uh, thank you to all of the teachers that have been involved. Uh, not only the teachers that are here, that have been working with the uh, the people who are finalists tonight, but also all of the teachers that do their job every day. Uh, that's there uh, right throughout the whole of the institute uh, that's there. And also all of the people who are in the support roles as well, because there are a lot of other people that are in learning support roles. There's a lot of people in administrative roles uh, there. So I, I say thank you. I really uh, am very proud to be part of the team here that uh, works and, uh, and I uh, and, that's, uh, and if we can take the message back, those who are here, take the message back to all of your colleagues about uh, what wonderful ambassadors, what wonderful people we've had here, but what a wonderful job that everybody is doing, uh, particularly here at uh, Box Hill Institute and the CAE, uh, at the Centre of Adult Education there. Uh, it's really, uh, we think that it's pretty special what people uh, are doing, so uh, uh, thank you to all of you. To the selection panel, uh, I know you've had a hard job. We haven't had any representatives from the selection panel up here tonight. But to uh, uh, Simon, Julie and Joel, uh, uh, thank you very much for the work that you've uh, put in. Uh, uh, um, I know that people, when they were on the selection panel, always come back and say uh, it's been a tough decision uh, that's there. I mean, we've got 40,000 uh, uh, learners that are uh, here. Uh, and then uh, when we also aggregate up the uh, CAE uh, group uh, that's there and our bookshops and, uh, and uh, others that, although the bookshop and the volunteer group are not eligible, but, but we've got uh, over 60,000 uh, that are eligible for tonight's awards, 40,000 for tonight's and 20,000 again for uh, next Wednesday night's awards. And, and for you to be the nine finalists there, really it is something special for you to, uh, to have got there uh, from, uh, 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 from that. There's also uh, to Irene, to uh, Sulea, uh, and also to uh, Katrina uh, uh, from our marketing customer service area that uh, did the organisation of tonight. A uh, very big thank you to you for uh, all of the work that you've put in. These events don't just happen, they, they take a lot of work and so uh, thank you to all of you for uh, the work that you've put in. I'd also like to uh, to say uh, to our digital team uh, uh, that have been doing their working up there, shining bright lights in my eyes so I can't read and things, but doing all of the uh, work with the uh, with the TV cameras and, and also the preliminary work and all of the filming of the students. Uh, so Dave and Jonathan, thank you for uh, putting in that uh, effort as well and uh, that work. Um, to our students and, that are here and uh, to Sandy and the, uh, the students, Jessica, Caddy, Ben, Aggie, Rachel, uh, and also to uh, Caitlin, Paul and Jed, they've been working the front of house and, uh, and making sure that everybody gets uh, fed there. So can we give them a pretty special last uh, round? So, so thank you. Uh, 
thank you, Sandy, and also to uh, Andrew and Gabrielle uh, that are out the back uh, there. Can we pass on? A, they, they won't hear it, but uh, Sandy, can you also uh, pass on our thanks to them as well? It is a student uh, and staff uh, uh, affair tonight. Uh, the, the flowers that you've got there have been put together by the floristry uh, students uh, there, so we thank them. And, uh, and we had our uh, soloist uh, guitarist, uh, uh, Jedi, uh, uh, who was working there. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if he's still uh, with us uh, there, but uh, thank you very much for the uh, work that you've uh, done. Uh, to James Stafford. Uh, as always, James, you have uh, done a wonderful job as the MC, and uh, there kept us on time, uh, kept it, kept the uh, program uh, going with uh, the occasional uh, witty words. Except uh, I, I thought you had great humour when you talked about Melbourne having any chance of winning. That that was <laughs> that was one of the biggest jokes I've heard. So uh, so, th but uh, but uh, thank you very much for uh, for the uh, wonderful job, James. You do. And to uh, Rashid, for the, the, uh, I think that uh, uh, my first comment to you would be, as you said, to that if uh, if you'd known that Box Hill uh, uh, had the uh, uh, college in Kuwait and it had been there when you were there, you might have uh, you, you wouldn't have come here. I've got news for you: uh, Box Hill College, Kuwait, is an all-female college, and. Uh, <laughs> So, so there is no way that you were going to be studying over there in Kuwait, uh, as you know the rules that uh, occur over there with uh, that. Uh, but uh, we were really very pleased that you chose to study at Taffy, and uh, and that uh, and that uh, and that you did accept the good advice not to barrack for Collingwood. I mean that was very good advice as well. So, uh, so, uh, but I think that. Uh, I think that uh, what uh, Rashif uh, did display was uh, uh, very much. He said it was. He said comment at one stage that this is not all about me, and uh, and I thought, uh, in actual fact, it is really. Uh, you showed a level of passion. You showed a level of being willing to be a risk taker. You showed that uh, hard work does get you to results, and, but you also showed that the balancing that with uh, community work and community development work is uh, is something that uh, gets a balance in life, but also gives you a way of going ahead. and uh, And it also demonstrates the uh, wonderful values that we believe in very much. And so uh, we are very very proud to have you as one of our uh, alumni. So thank you for coming along and sharing your story today. That's there. <laughs> But uh, I'd also like to make mention, uh, we have uh, a couple of uh, guests here from Rotary. Uh, Rotary have been a wonderful supporters uh, to us. Uh, so to Joe and Tom, uh, thank you. I know you, uh, you come along each year and, uh, and support us uh, at the Institute with many scholarships and, uh, and, uh, and uh, we have uh, students who get opportunities and you do great work in the community. Uh, we know you're back next Wednesday uh, that's there. I'll say more next Wednesday that's there, but thank you for coming and, uh, and uh, thank you for giving us the uh, support uh, as well. I'd also like to thank Anna for coming and representing uh, Neil Angus, uh, the member for Forest Hill, and be being prepared to participate. We always appreciate the support that we get, and, uh, and it just shows the wide support that we do get within the community, when, as I'm saying uh, thank you to everybody that's here. We do hold the Student of the Year awards uh, nominees very in very high regard, and we do believe it's a testament to both yourselves and what you have done the heavy amount of work that you've done that's uh, there, the, the commitment, the fact that you've, uh, that you've worked with your, uh, uh, the teachers that are there and I've mentioned uh, before. It's all of that that got us last year the uh, Training Provider of the Year um, for, uh, in the Victorian Training Provider of the Year, which is the award for the institution that is the outstanding institute uh, uh, within the t Victorian TAFE system. And, uh, and it's only with students like you, with teachers like you, with community support that we get, that we got that sort of a, uh, a recognition that's uh, there. So what we uh, look at uh, doing is uh, we're looking at uh, the, the way that we recognise the, uh, the students uh, that are there and the way our students are going to go through as uh, we have the award winner tonight going through to the state awards. 
we won't be going through as an organisation because you're not allowed if you win to go in the next year now under the new rules. So, uh, uh, so, uh, but uh, but we're looking forward to our uh, uh, being successful in the other categories. But what I would like to say is that a couple of the things that came through as common themes from the students uh, there tonight uh, as we were uh, going through. And whilst you had a variety of reasons for uh, studying or choosing to study at either Box Hill or the CAE uh, that was there, your commitment and your hard work and your success stories uh, and the involvement that you had with the community came through with each one of you as you were going. And I think that that's a really important thing. But also each one of you uh, did thank the people around you, that is your families, be they the parents or your uh, uh, partners or uh, there, or, uh, and uh, so that was an important element that came through with everybody as well and I think that that shows that the sense of community and the sense of support is always very important. And the same, and as I mentioned, you said some comments that I noted down, things about amazing teachers, industry specialists, coaches, mentors, um, they guided us. But the thing that really stuck to me as I was going through was hearing and hearing about and, uh, and something that I was absolutely delighted to hear was when you talked about that it was friendly, that it was enjoyable, that it was supporting, but the most important word was when you came through and said that you found it a caring environment. And that came through with several of the people. That's something that we have as one of our values is that we really do want to have an institute that is about caring for our students caring for our own people and caring for the community. And so that's a, uh, it was wonderful to see that come through tonight uh, there because Box Hill and the CAE do care. Uh, so that's very, uh, very important to us. Obviously, uh, um, as, we're, uh, as we're going through uh, now, we, <coughs> we move on to, uh, to uh, saying to, to uh, Iris, uh, congratulations uh, to you, uh, uh, it's a uh, wonderful, wonderful um, win for you to have. Uh, we don't have uh, any, any expectations much of you now going through to the state awards other than to win. Because <laughs> we're, in, we're into that. Uh, we're very much into, uh, into that. But what we look and we see is uh, a, a wonderful story, a wonderful person uh, that's there. Uh, we pledge that we will give you the support, uh, whatever support we can to give you, to uh, have, give it your best shot. And whilst we do say that we would like you to win, we do expect you to win, uh, that's there. But really what we do expect is you just to have the opportunity to do your best. And if you go and do your best and you feel that you have done your best and you feel we've given you all of the support, then that's all we really could ask for. And we think that if that happens, we think that you should win, even if they don't choose you. All right, so therefore, so, so, that's, uh, so we, we congratulate you uh, very much in terms of uh, what you've uh, achieved so far. We look forward to working with you and supporting you to be able to go onto the, uh, onto the awards that's there. The last thing I'd like to do is, is ladies and gentlemen, if you could uh, take your glasses, please, uh, there. And if I could ask uh, that, uh, normally what we do is we say, could you be upstanding and we'll toast the, uh, uh, the finalist and our winners and, uh, and our entrepreneur of the year. But rather than do that, I'd rather have the finalist and the entrepreneur of the year and our last year's winner if you could actually stand up, and we'll stay seated, we'll stay seated, but I'd rather, I think that we should be looking at you, uh, because we're so proud of you, and what we'd like to say is, to each one of you, congratulations, and may, can everybody just please toast everybody as the finals there, thank you. Cheers. And uh, <coughs> with that, uh, can I also uh, just say, uh, Thank you everybody for your attendance tonight. Thank you for your support of Box Hill Institute and the CAE and the Box Hill Group. Also, can I remind everybody, if you've had a couple of drinks, make sure you're going home with someone who didn't have a couple of drinks. Uh, and if you've both had a couple of drinks, well, then get a taxi uh, there as part of your responsible uh, going home, uh, please. But uh, again, thank you all. Uh, we hope that uh, should you uh, uh, be needing to be involved in any other learning activities that you choose either to come to Box Hill Institute to do the programs or the CAE if you're in the, in the uh, uh, CBD uh, area um, there. But uh, if not, continue to be part of our family and part of our alumni and part of our friendship uh, group uh, there. Thank you everybody for your attendance. Thank you.